Arkansas who would listen to his ma when she told him he should go to school. He'd sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, then pretty soon you'd find him at the local auction barn. He'd stand and listen carefully, then pretty soon he began to see how the auctioneer could talk so rapidly. He said, oh my, it's do or die, I've got to learn that auction cry, I gotta make my mark and be an auctioneer. The auction method of marketing is alive and well. Auctions come in all types, sizes, and platforms, but one thing is for sure. It takes more than a cowboy hat and talking fast to be an auctioneer. Stanley Community College and Carolina Auction Academy are pleased to present a program to help you better understand the auction method of marketing how to become a more informed consumer, and to see why the number one reason people give for attending auctions is that they are fun. Hey, well, all right, sir, open the gate and let them out and walk them, boy. Here we come a lot of number 29 in. What are you going to give for them? I'm a 25, I'll give 30 now, 5. Would it be to have another Hello, I'm Betty O'Neill, and welcome back to another session of More Than a Cowboy Hat. You know, when we started this series, we were talking about more than a cowboy hat, and today we're going to actually focus on that as one of our sessions. Got two people with me today, a former graduate, well, not a former graduate, a graduate, Erin May, and also Ivan Broadwell, who's our lead instructor at Carolina Auction Academy. So today, what we'd like to do, first of all, is tell you a little bit about Erin and ask him a few questions. Erin graduated from Carolina Auction Academy, but then you went on and took our real estate program. And so he finished that, and he's won a lot of championships, the rookie, associate rookie runner-ups, what they call it, don't they? Runner-up rookie champion. But um, tell us a little bit about what interested you in auction school to begin with. Uh, growing up as a young kid, uh, I always went to my granddad to auctions and things there, and just fell in love with the sound of an auctioneer and just the excitement that auctions have. <laughs> Any so, particular kind of auctions your granddad went to? Uh, lots of estate auctions and farm equipment auctions and things there, all mm -hmm. over the southeast and things there. Always were at Godley's on a lot of their equipment sales and things there as a kid. So, mm -hmm. uh, You decided you wanted to be one, huh? <laughs> I did, I did. And what helped you pick Carolina Auction Academy to come to get your training? I'd actually had some other friends that had went to Carolina's Auction Academy and spoke very highly of the school and the instructors there. So followed up with them and just was very pleased with my time there at the Carolinas Auction Academy. Well, great, and we were pleased with you and the success you've had since then. Um, and you went right to work right after you got your license at a livestock barn, didn't you? I did, I did. Uh, that's part of the reason I went into school there also was uh, my mother was currently managing a livestock barn and things there, and we'd had some other contract auctioneers that had done a good job for us, but uh, me always wanting to be an auctioneer and things there, it was just a, a natural fit for me to go into that. If livestock auctions any different than a, an estate auction? Um, yeah, you never know what's going to come in. Um, the estate auctions and things there, you normally have weeks ahead to plan. A t plan. Uh, livestock auctions that day, all your animals roll into the yard there. You're working for a lot of different consigners there at one time. Fast pitch, fast pace, lots of buyers. And the chant's a little different, too. People refer to it often as the cattle rattle. <laughs> it is. Uh, you go to estate auctions and things there, and you hear an auctioneer go, and then you go to a cattle auction. You might not be able to understand a word that that auctioneer is saying and things there, but it is a lot faster-paced auction a lot of times because you do have professional buyers there mm -hmm. uh, at the um, auction. Instead of at an estate sale, you've got your moms and pops and everybody else coming to that sale. Uh, the cattle buyers uh, want to have a fast-paced auction, want to be able to buy a lot of items quickly in an hour and uh, and get on with the rest of their day. Mm. Do you ever have people come up to you and say, oh, I didn't know you had to go to school to be an auctioneer? <laughs> that is very, very popular there. And I mean, uh, people, you, you get walked up, what do I have to do to be an auctioneer? And I said, well, first of all, you got to go through a mandatory classroom setting. And I always recommend Carolina Auction Academy to all my friends and things there. And uh, But then uh, I passed the state test there also. So yeah. it's very similar to the real estate class that I just uh, completed here at the Stanley Community College. Yeah. And we appreciate you taking that too, and that's a nice match because now you can not only sell anything but real estate, now you will be able to auction real estate as well. So we have uh, encouraged real estate brokers to add the auction school as another tool in their tool belt. Um, you have other interests besides cattle. Uh, we saw you perform at a benefit auction the other week. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Uh, I have been involved in a couple different benefit auctions there. Uh, the one we had just a few weeks ago, you and uh, two other instructors there, uh, Gary Boyd and Bill O'Neill also came to the auction and helped out, was for Hospice of Union County. Um, great organization, the hospice organization, and, and uh, I was honored for them to ask me to help with that association and to help with their auction this last week. Uh, and we understand they raised more money than <coughs> they ever have before, huh? They had, they had. They, they did extremely, extremely well and uh, about doubled their participation from last year. Well, good. Congratulations. You did a nice job at that. Um, in, you mentioned going to school, and usually people say, well, I just want to learn how to talk fast. And <laughs> That's just a tiny part of what you have to learn to be an auctioneer, and that's one of the reasons that we're so pleased to have Ivan on our staff. Ivan's our lead instructor, and uh, he teaches a lot of things, and he even talks about antiques, and he promises not to call me one, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, but Ivan, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you drive all the way from South Carolina to teach with us, which we're very grateful that you do. Well, Betty, you know, I've been an auctioneer now for 41 years and I love the profession. And the profession has been very good to me um, because it has, uh, I like to give back. And I give, the way I give back is by teaching young folks how to get into the auction business. Um, I have many hats that I wear in the auction business. Um, I'm an auctioneer, of course, and I operate my own auction company, but also work for the state of South Carolina. Uh, I've worked for the auction commission there for 23 years, um, both on the commission and I currently serve as an investigative review officer. Mm -hmm. I stay pretty busy. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. And he teaches at least five sessions for us every mm -hmm. year. Um, and we'll ask you a little bit about one of them in a few minutes uh, about the antiques. But another thing that our viewers might be interested in, Ivan holds the distinction of being inducted into the Hall of Fame in two states, both yeah. North Carolina and South Carolina. That's correct. <laughs> we're, we're proud of you for that. And we do have South Carolina students. That's another point that... Uh, we like to make about Carolina Auction Academy. We are fully accredited with both North Carolina and South mm -hmm. Carolina. We have a student in the current class that just graduated is fixing to go Friday and take the South Carolina yep. test. Mm -hmm. So that's always helpful. Well, one of the sessions you teach that everybody is interested in is antiques. So mm -hmm. give us a little hint of what kinds of things you might cover in a class on antiques. Well, teaching the antiques class is just like any of the other classes that we teach in that what we're trying to do is give the student a very basic understanding of the class. Uh, you know, it's kind of like in the Army, uh, you go in and you go through basic training and you're going to be an infantry soldier the rest of your life. No matter what you wind up doing, <laughs> you might wind up being a company clerk, but you're still a soldier. <laughs> yeah. And that's the way it is with auctioneers. When you go through that class, you're an auctioneer. Uh, Aaron is one of the very few that had somewhere to go right <laughs> out the door. Right. But even as, as a cattle auctioneer, you just heard mm -hmm. that he got called to do a uh, yeah. charity sale. Uh -huh. And that's why we prepare like the antiques. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to prepare them so that when that call comes, they're prepared to sell some antiques. But what we do is we teach them uh, the basic understanding of antiques, uh, how, to, how to determine age of antiques, various woods, uh, period identification of antiques. That's the kind of thing we want you to have a basic understanding of. Mm -hmm. And how to spot. And how to spot them. <laughs> I, you know, one of the questions you get all the time is, well, it's got to be an antique because it's in my grandmama's house. <laughs> yes. <gasps> What's your comment to that? Not till I see it. <laughs> <laughs> we get those calls all the time. Uh, you know, this, I know it was 200 years old because it belonged to my great-great-grandmother. That's not, that's just a family story. <laughs> they forget to tell you that great-grandma went down to the corner store yes. and bought it last week, right? Yeah. So there is a lot to being an auctioneer, the appraisal part of it, understanding how much it's going to cost to do the sale, mm -hmm. getting your help there. And Aaron, you're getting ready to go out on another venture, aren't you? Didn't you say you're going to start some sales of your own? Yes, i am uh, got a place in Monroe there that I'm uh, fixing to open up and uh, start my own auction house and things there. Just uh, some of the exposure from the charity auctions have helped open some of those avenues and doors and things there and also working as a contract auctioneer for some other friends and things in the industry and things there. Yep. And uh, as Ivan talked about in the class, you go to the brief overview of the antiques like the charity sale there they had some donated Fenton glass and things like that and that's the first thing that I remembered is him <laughs> talking about the Fenton and the different types of glass and things there uh, in the auction class. 
some of the other topics that we have to cover by state law but are fun to cover. We talk about appraisals. We talk about the bid calling, of course. But there's also math and accounting and mm -hmm. uh, keeping your escrow, escrow records, how long do you keep those, and some of the laws and rules and regulations. But there, one, the one of the comments that we get all the time from people that have been through school is, gosh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the part we want to hold up all the time is that, you know, maybe you want to be an auctioneer and that is fantastic and that's our goal is to help you be successful passing the state test, getting licensed and being a successful auctioneer as Aaron will be. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes people just want to be a more informed consumer. They love auctions and they just want to find out are they doing it right? <laughs> and so we encourage them to come. And then you always need clerks and cashiers and set up people. Auction uh, setup specialist, one of the classes Ivan teaches, and he comes in and he says, we're going to teach you how to be an ASS. <laughs> and, you know, we know some people know, but <laughs> that's an auction setup specialist, mm -hmm. which is a key role in, in auctions. Well, anything else, guys, that you think our group would like to hear about the auction industry right now and why the auction method is alive and well still? Um, just like I said, even if you're not planning on being an auctioneer, the Carolina's Auction Academy will just make you become a more informed buyer when you do go to auctions and things there, whether it's a real estate auction, an estate auction, uh, or just a regular Friday night draw auction and things there, being able to spot a true antique from another one mm -hmm. and, and know what you're actually buying to be an informed consumer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, Ivan? One of, the, one of the things that I do uh, for the state of South Carolina is I work with the educational uh, end of the business. Um, and we are constantly watching the performance of auction schools. And one of the things that I want to see at Carolina Auction Academy is that we are always on top. I want that, I want that uh, graduation rate up there. I want that state exam rate up there. And that's what we strive for all the time, to give them the best possible education that we can. Thank you, and you're a key part of that. And that's our goal for North Carolina, too. We actually have a group going to take the test Thursday. so. Uh, they're fired up and ready to go. I'd um, like to encourage everyone that we do have another class starting in January. Um, one of the neat things about marketing for our school is that we are listed with the National Auctioneers Association under their approved schools. And when you go to North Carolina, it's the very first one. Um, and they tell us that that part of their website is the most often visited when people are looking nationally and internationally to find an auction school. Mm -hmm. So we hope everyone will keep Carolina Auction Academy in mind. Have a contest coming up um, in January and a conference in, in uh, Greensboro this year. So we hope that we'll see a lot of auctioneers there because that's a great networking time and we have great speakers. Well, January 26th, next class of Carolina Auction Academy. January 27th starts our next class of real estate, if you're interested in pre-licensing real estate. But for now, there are cowboy hats involved in auctions, <laughs> and we're glad of it. So for now, Betty O'Neill signing off, and thank you, Ivan and Aaron. Glad to be here. Thank you. There was a boy in Arkansas who would listen to his mom when she told him he should go to school. He'd sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, then pretty soon you'd find him at the local auction barn. He'd stand and listen carefully, then pretty soon he began to see how the auctioneer could talk so rapidly. He said, oh my, it's do or die, I've got to learn that auction cry, gotta make my mark and be an auctioneer. $25 bid now, $30, 30 bid, give me 30, make it 30 bid, I'm a $30. At Carolina Auction Academy, students learn about the rules, regulations, laws, marketing, contracts, product knowledge, and ethics, and much more in addition to bid calling. But it is a fun class and a great learning experience. We have two sessions each year, one in August and one in January with class size limited to 20. Why not think about joining us? For more information, contact Carolina Auction Academy at 704-991-0200. We just can't stand to have the mediocre man selling things at auction using our good name. I'll send you off to auction school, then you'll be nobody's fool. You can take your place among the best. $35 bid and I'll $40, $40 will you give me 40, make it 40 bid and I'll $40, $40 will you give me 40.
Hurdin, 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 hurdin